Megalodon was one of the giant predators ever, so it makes sense that people are interested in it. But does this top predator still live in the dark ocean depths, or was it just a great white shark that got too big? Emma Bernard, who is in charge of the fossil fish collection at the museum, helps people tell the difference between fact and fiction, which includes fossil sharks. The giant shark in the world. Megalodon fossils from 20 million years ago are of an Otodus megalodon, also called Carcharodon or Carcharocles megalodon. For the next 13 million years, the giant shark ruled the oceans. It died out only 3.6 million years ago. Oh. Megalodon was not only the giant shark ever but also one of the biggest fish ever. It was probably between 15 and 18 meters long at its longest, three times longer than the giant great white shark had ever seen. These numbers are based on the size of the megalodon's teeth, which can grow to be 18 centimeters long without a complete skeleton. The word megalodon means big tooth in English. These giant animals' teeth tell us much about them, like what they ate. A tooth from a great white shark next to a tooth from a megalodon. A tooth from a great white shark next to a tooth from a megalodon. What did the megalodon eat? Emma says, megalodon would have eaten meat with its huge, serrated teeth. It would have eaten whales, big fish, and other sharks. It is essential to hunt big game because a big animal needs to eat a lot of food. This would have included everything from dolphins to humpback whales. Whale bones that have turned into fossils show that the megalodon like to eat whales. Several of these have marks on them where megalodon teeth were cut. Some even have the tips of teeth broken off and stuck in the bone during a feeding frenzy that happened millions of years ago. Wide open. Megalodon had to be able to open its mouth wide to eat whales, which were much more significant than they were. Its mouth would be about 2.7 to 3.4 meters wide, which is more than big enough to swallow two adults standing next to each other. Studies that tried to recreate the shark's bite force show that it may have been one of the most powerful predators ever. There were 276 teeth in these jaws. People's bites are thought to have a force of about 1,317 newtons, n, while a great white shark's bite is believed to have a point of approximately 18,216 n. Researchers think that megalodon bit somewhere between 108,514 n and 182,201 n. A fossilized whale rib with scratches on the surface made by a megalodon. The tip of a megalodon tooth is still in this fossilized whale rib bone. Megalodon had what kind of look? Most reconstructions say that megalodon looked like a giant great white shark. It is now thought that this is not true. Compared to the great white, O megalodon probably had a much shorter nose or rostrum, and a flatter, almost squashed mouth. It had long pectoral fins like the blue shark to support its size and weight. Emma says that many reconstructions of Megalodon show it is a bigger version of the great white shark because people used to think they were related. Megalodon comes from a different family of sharks, of which Megalodon was supposed to be the last living member. Still, we now know that this is not true. The Megalodon's ancestor is the 55 million year old shark Otodus obliquus, which could grow up to 10 meters long. But scientists think that this shark's history of the evolution goes back to Cretolamna appendiculata, which is more than 100 million years old and is 105 million years old. As more fossils have been found, it's clear that Megalodon and the great white shark's ancestors lived together. Some scientists say they might have even competed with each other, Emma. Megalodon probably had long pectoral fins, like the ones blue sharks have today. Oh. Megalodon is a shark that lives worldwide and has adapted to living in warm tropical and subtropical places. Megalodon teeth have been found on every continent except Antarctica, which shows that the animal lived worldwide. Emma says, we can find a lot of their teeth along the east coast of North America, and, around the beaches and at the bottom of saltwater creeks and rivers in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida. This is probably partly because the rocks are old. Still, it's also because collectors can easily find them on the ocean floor when they go scuba diving. Large groups of them can also be seen off the coasts of Australia and Morocco. Emma said they could be found near Walton on the Nays, Essex, even though they are rare and often of poor quality in the UK. Why do so many people have megalodon teeth? Most of the fossilized remains of megalodon are of its teeth. Sharks always make new teeth for the rest of their lives. Sharks lose teeth every one to two weeks, depending on their eating. Throughout their lives, they can lose up to 40,000 teeth. Since shark teeth always fall to the ocean floor, there is a greater chance that they will turn into fossils. The shark's teeth are the most durable part of its bones. 
In contrast to human bones, which are covered with the mineral calcium phosphate, shark skeletons are made of soft cartilage, just like our noses and ears. Two hands hold a tooth from a megalodon. The only continent where megalodon teeth have not been found in Antarctica. So, more challenging teeth can quickly turn into fossils, but soft tissue can only be kept alive under specific conditions. Also, vertebrae from a fossilized megalodon the size of a dinner plate have been found. Emma also says that a fossil of a megalodon was found in Peru. It seems to have the brain case, all of the teeth, and a short string of vertebrae, but I haven't seen high-quality photos of this specimen yet. This amazing fossil might help us better understand what these huge meat-eaters look like. A huge shark has died. We know that Megalodon died out at the end of the Pliocene, 2.6 million years ago, when the world began to cool down. Even though no one knows when the last Megalodon died, research shows it was at least 3.6 million years ago. Scientists think that as temperatures dropped and the number of species at the bottom of the food chain went down, up to a third of all large marine animals died. This includes 43% of turtles and 35% of seabirds. This made a difference for the top predators in the food chain. There are several ways in which the cooling of the earth could have led to the megalodon's extinction. Since adult sharks only lived in tropical waters, the drop in ocean temperatures probably took away a lot of their habitat. Because of this, the megalodon's prey could have gone extinct, or they could have gotten used to the cooler water and moved to a place where the sharks couldn't follow. People often get the wrong idea about animals like great white sharks. Some people also think that megalodon had its babies close to the beach. The pups would have had a safe place to grow up in these shallow coastal waters, away from bigger whales with teeth and other predators that could be hiding in the open water. As ice formed at the poles and the sea level went down, these places where animals raised their young would have been destroyed. Though, could megalodon still be alive? Despite what the many channels have said in the past, it is not alive in the deep oceans. If a monster as big as the megalodon still lived in the oceans, we would know about it. The sharks would leave clear bite marks on other big sea creatures, and their huge teeth would continue to litter the ocean floors in millions. Not to mention that megalodon, which lives in warm water, couldn't survive in the ocean's cold depths, where it would be more likely to stay hidden. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel.